Hello everyone, I'm Stant Latore, author of the Zombie Bible, and I am on an uncomfortable mission tonight to keep my blind one-year-old daughter awake all night for her EEG test tomorrow. Actually, a pretty stressful test. And as you can see, she's not entirely thrilled about the idea of staying up all night before it. Um, so we're passing the time by reading. Uh, I'm reading to her. Uh, she's blind. If I'm reading a paperback or a hardcover, she'll fill the pages and I'll read to her. And if I'm reading on my, my Kindle, um, she just listens. But she likes my reading voice. So that's how we're making the night bearable and, and uh, sometimes enjoyable. Um, so mostly just passages from favorite books uh, of mine. But I thought I would also uh, read her and you uh, a small piece of the zombie Bible. Um, which is not a part that has a great deal of violence in it because, uh, well, she's one year old and it probably won't scar her for life, but it wouldn't feel completely comfortable. So, anyway, here's a brief passage from the volume of the Zombie Bible called What Our Eyes Have Witnessed. It had happened so fast, so fast, the corpse at the door had fallen, slipping to the side of the threshold and Polycarp had stepped over it into the alley to confront the others, moving as unhesitantly as though he were walking to the market. Regina had stood in the door, fighting her own urge to hide, unwilling to leave him, her lips still warm from kissing him, and her heart in turmoil. She gazed out into the alley in the wavering light of the oil lamp, and she couldn't breathe for wonder. Polycarp had moved among the dead with an intensity and grace as though he were dancing. He laid his hand on each one as gently as a parent blessing a son or a daughter. Each time he touched one's shoulder or its head, he gazed into its eyes. And the first time, Regina gasped to see a living spirit flood back into those murky, dead eyes. For a moment, a middle-aged woman gazed out to the eyes of the corpse, her eyes raw with regret and remembered pain. Polycarp held the woman's gaze a brief moment. Then she let out a slow sigh and crumpled to the stones of the street. Polycarp did that with each of them, his eyes deep with sorrow. He seemed to have no fear. One grasped his shoulder, pulling him back. He touched its hand and glanced back at it. And then a young man was gazing back at him. The man breathed a soft moan, not the hunger moan of the prowling dead, but the exhaustion and relief moan of a man letting go of a burden too long carried. With that sound, he slipped to the earth and lay still, no breath stirring inside his gashed open and half-eaten chest. One of the dead had gone for Polycarp's throat. He had caught the thing's neck in his hand and looked steadily into its eyes. Even as that one slid to the earth, two others seized upon Polycarp's arm, pulling him toward their teeth. The father simply touched them both on the head, looking in the eyes of one, then the other, as if witnessing and accepting each one's confession, in no more time than it would have taken to shout. As though each one's spirit had been bound deep within its body with chains of hunger, it was now released at Polycarp's touch, escaping the body in a death sigh. Regina had trembled as she watched from the door, her heart beating with a purely animal fear at the nearness of the dead. She could neither swing the door shut nor step through it. At the extremity of her fear, her face darkened with shame and anger. She was no Roman patrician bred on milk and water, to tumble from her chair at the first sight of something unsavory. Of Rome she may be, but of the Subura, where knives, not gossip, flashed across dinner tables. And her ancestry was Syrian, of a people whose bones were strong as the bones of the hills in which they lived. She bore old lines on her back, a savage record of what could be witnessed and what could be survived. The oil lamp shook as Regina's hand trembled, but she did not wait. So thanks for listening. I'm going to stop the video, but I'm going to keep reading to my little one. Um, I'll post a link to where you can find the book, if you're interested, with this video. And that's What Our Eyes Have Witnessed in the Zombie Bible 
by Stant Latore. Thanks for listening. Also, keep us in your thoughts because we have a really long night ahead. Um, but at least it'll be one filled with good books. Take care.